Greetings. I uh, have reluctantly reached the conclusion that David Icke um, was uh, taken out by his adversaries, in particular Bill Gates, mentally. He's no longer, unfortunately, in my opinion, able to function like the David Icke that we know and love. And so what I'm saying that the news is uh, that I'm reporting and needs to gain traction elsewhere, if you can help, please do, uh, is that we're facing uh, what I see as almost inevitable nuclear war because you've got um, Benjamin Netanyahu, who is so obviously, and if, if you're not on board with what I'm about to say, I ask you to start uh, watching United Nations news. Uh, in the United States, uh, uh, the news reporting is dominated by Jewish people who are in favor of the genocide that Benjamin Netanyahu is perpetrating. So you as a member of the public, if you're not on to that, um, please start uh, watching uh, United Nations news on uh, on Twitter, on X, uh, and or on Instagram or on uh, Facebook, United Nations News. That's where you'll get the real story. Uh, we're, we're being uh, totally lied to by the American Jewish news media. I'm not saying it's all Jewish, obviously, but they, they are in the, they're at the pinnacle uh, and they control uh, what the remainder of the outlets do. It's, so, what is the danger then? Um, Netanyahu has launched a genocide, which is obviously a loser, right? Uh, nobody wants to sit by and watch uh, children massacred. Nobody wants to sit by and watch what uh, Netanyahu keeps articulating. He's, he's basically pleading guilty, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, making some speech, making it clear that his intent is to kill all 2.3 million Arabs in Gaza to obliterate them. And he's bombed the living dickens out of Gaza, right? He's bombed schools, he's bombed hospitals, he's bombed universities, he's bombed the tent in Rafa. He's just obliterating uh, Gaza so that he can rebuild it as a Jewish settlement. Uh, likewise, perhaps the West Bank. So there's, there is no Palestinian population left in what was always Palestine before Israel came in in 1947. Uh, and the United Nations, in its original charter uh, approval of Israel, said that uh, there is going to be two states, a Palestinian, Palestinian state and an Israeli state. And, um, you know, Israel's denying its own charter from the United Nations. Um, so, you know, if someone is, excuse the expression, please, hell bent on uh, covering up a genocide, is, is hell bent on committing a genocide and lying to uh, the people to perpetuate it, such that you've got um, <coughs> uh, Biden bombing Yemen, calling Yemen the terrorists. When in fact he is the terrorist, he's perpetrating a genocide. Um, and uh, we have Israel bombing the Iranian consulate in Damascus, bombing Iran directly, um, really, I think, trying to provoke World War III. Uh, now, the what I'm going to say is inconclusive, but... Who among you doesn't suspect at some level? We don't know what happened for sure with the death of the president of Iran. The, the, the uh, person in the entire world most likely to be able to stop this genocide, and now he is dead in a helicopter crash. Um, it's only, let's say, two weeks ago, so we don't know for sure what happened, but we do see that... Um, <coughs> Um, YouTube channel Tech Show keeps showing this picture 
of the pilot being an Israeli agent, the pilot of Raisi's helicopter uh, being a an Israeli agent, so that, you know, we're waiting for the black box. But, I, I mean, so this is really serious stuff, right? And um, the, the thing is, in terms of just straight-up geopolitical, geomilitary realities, Russia and China cannot afford to let Iran go down. So they have already warned they're going to enter uh, this war. And I think with the assassin, it, we're waiting to see what the results of, uh, what caused Raisi's death. But Israel has assassinated uh, Iran's nuclear scientists. They're, they're good at assassination. Donald Trump assassinated the Iranian general uh, Soleimani. So the Pentagon uh, is has this kind of assassination in their repertoire. Um, and yet the whole world is protesting this genocide in every capital that you see. If you follow the news, follow you can if you're interested, please follow Al Jazeera English, follow Middle East Eye, <clears throat> follow Democracy Now. Uh, it's a totally U.S. Uh, YouTube channel, Democracy Now. They're really tremendous. Uh, there's other good ones to follow, but those are the top ones. But most of all, follow United Nations. Who's going to doubt the United Nations? Um, and um, so why would Netanyahu press the button? Because he's, he's trying to do the morally... Uh, possibly the worst crime imaginable, a, a, a genocide, and people aren't buying it, and he's getting pushed into a corner, and uh, so then his ultimate recourse is to push the nuclear button. Now, people will say, well, that's a, <coughs> pardon me for clearing my throat, uh, that people will say that that's not going to help him, you know, to commit what is ultimately going to be suicidal, because the whole Northern Hemisphere ends up getting nuked. Um, but what I think is that this is part of the plan of the reptilian extraterrestrial shapeshifters. All right, so uh, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll put a clip of Trump and then Biden with vertical slit eye pupils. Now, you and I know that humans have round eye pupils, right? So if you're talking to someone <laughs> and you suddenly look at them, they have a cat's eye, vertical slit, eye people, you know that person is not really human. <laughs> uh, either that or there's some kind of strange mutation. But when you see this mutation common to the leaders of the world, Putin, Xi Jinping, Fidel Castro, uh, um, and so on, I mean, you just Google whoever your leader is that you want to check out, good or bad, and say, you know, leader A, reptilian, Google that. Uh, you know, like um, Fidel Castro, reptilian, or Putin, reptilian, what have you. Trump, reptilian, Biden, reptilian. And, and you'll see the vertical slit eye pupils. Um, so their goal as extraterrestrials, they don't care about humanity um, and they are in competition with other extraterrestrials that are good the the uh, um, reptilians are, are, are from the constellation Draco they're the Satans of the Milky Way and they want to bump off the Balan Nordics they want to bump off the Venus extraterrestrials they want they they want to take over the, like they have the grays uh, and and um, so what do they get out of annihilating the human race? A warning to the other extraterrestrial races uh, that are on God's side, you're next. Uh, they, they use the annihilation of the northern, uh, of the earth, of the humanity on earth as a warning to other extraterrestrial races. Don't mess with us, you are next. <laughs> And by the way, um, 
Laura Eisenhower, uh, who is a great granddaughter of uh, Dwight Eisenhower, who was, of course, a general in World War II, who was president of the United States, she agrees with what I've just said. Uh, I haven't been watching her recently on the Gaza phenomenon, but on other uh, serious calamities that the, we faced recently, she, she agrees with. She and I have communicated, uh, not in detail, but a few times. We got to get the word out. Help me do that, please. Because f f uh, if, if we protest, if, if we let Netanyahu, Biden, and for that matter, Trump, know that we're on to them, uh, we, we may be able to shame them into stopping their nuclear annihilation of humanity. I'm putting myself out on a limb. David, David Icke ain't doing it. Um, but what do we have to lose, right? Uh, that's my perception. I've, I've spent 25,000 hours uh, studying war and peace since the 9-11-2001 attack. Uh, former United States Senator is the one who clued me in to the things I'm saying. And along with, in part, the Roger Stone, I, I repudiate him. I think he's actually on the other side. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've informed myself. 